Welcome back to Killer True Fan Spooktacular Toy Reviews. Everyone knows slasher films, a masked killer, a cast of disposable characters, and a high body count. These are all the ingredients to a formula so ingrained in the horror genre that even in 2021 we are still seeing such films persist. But what does this have to do with dinosaurs? Well, when considering Jurassic Park 3, the film seems to follow a classic horror slasher film formula, only under the guise of a dinosaur adventure flick. You have a group of characters, many disposable, in an isolated location being stalked by an unceasing killer, that being the Spinosaurus. I mean, considering the recipe for what makes a slasher villain, it certainly has a body count, and it does seem to have an agenda when it comes to hunting down our hapless cast. With that in mind, it seems like a review of a Spinosaurus would be the perfect choice for a Halloween-themed video. However, I've already covered both the Nanmu and W Dragon Spinosaurus models to some capacity on the channel, so instead I think I'll take a look at one of the Spinosaurus's victims. You all know what I'm talking about, it's the neck snap heard around the world whose ramifications are still being felt today. Oh yeah, I'm talking about the unfortunate T-Rex that was unceremoniously dispatched by the lead villain dinosaur of Jurassic Park 3. But whereas some were upset by this, others embraced the change and fell in love with the unique design of the Spinosaurus. And if you're one of those who celebrates the Spinosaurus status as the true king of the Jurassic franchise, then this product is for you. It's the Rebor Bites the Dust Tyrannosaurus Rex Carcass. Leave it to Rebor to crank out some dead dinosaur pieces, am I right? It took almost two decades to get a piece that lets you recreate one of the most infamous moments of the entire Jurassic franchise. So how did it turn out? And is it worth getting to complete your Sorna diorama? Well, let's find out. No box with this one, I got it used, so we're just going to jump right into the figure itself, starting as we always do with the head. So starting on the head of this figure, Something immediately noteworthy is that Rebor seems to have course corrected with this version of their male Rex. The nasal ridges of the previous stand-in male Rex, i.e. the jungle variant of the Killer Queen, were much more subdued than what we've seen in the films. And that made sense, it was just a repaint of the female sculpt after all, but it is refreshing to see that they've created a more screen-accurate sculpture for an offering clearly intended to be the male. I also think the detail is much better defined and painted on this piece, than what we got on the Killer Queens. The scale work is quite well done across the board, and I also appreciate all the little details, like the golden eye being rolled back up into the head and how the blood work around the mouth appears to be thinned down as if it's been mixed with saliva. Speaking on the mouth, you can see that Rebor has used the usual semi-translucent plastic for the teeth that I always love, but unfortunately, the jaw does not articulate. I thought at first it might. There's a big seam line that I thought would be indicative of a hinge, but nope, it is fixed in place. I do get why though, I mean, it might have been difficult or awkward to engineer a jaw that could open around the sagging throat. I mean, it might have been cool to pose it with its jaw lolling open, but I I'm certainly not too torn up about it. I do think this is a wonderful sculpture that does a solid job of capturing the in-universe likeness from basically every angle. Moving on from the head, you can see that Rebor have also included the thicker neck seen in the male Rexes, and the details of the folding skin in this area all look very well done. Once you hit the midsection, you can see how the skin bunches up around the shoulder blade at the base of the neck, and you also have an indication of the rib cage just past the shoulder there. The massive thigh is folded up against the torso, and you can see all of the tension lines pulling with the movement of that leg. The tail features some striations and wrinkles that come with that gracile curl. This creates a sort of leathery quality to the underbelly, but the sides and top do still feature the lovely scale work. The underside has been flattened with the weight of the animal, and that also helps it lay more evenly on your shelf. But that isn't to say the detail has been forgotten down here. You still have plenty of areas where the skin is pulling, sagging, or buckling in on itself, particularly around the leg there. And all of it has been covered in that lovely scale work. One huge problem I have with the Killer Queen models would be the fact that the texture feels so uniform and overstated. Here though, I think there's a greater variety in details, and it's much more subtle in its presentation, which I think makes for a more realistic model in the long run. Speaking on the legs of the figure, I love the somewhat curled toes that feels accurate to what we have seen in the movies when we get that little toe twitch. 
The muscle tones on the calves are well done, as is the musculature in those massive thighs. The kneecap has been adorned with some wrinkles, and you can see the back of the toes have that classic plate scaling look. The toe claws themselves are done in a shade of black, and you can see that the opposite leg has much the same treatment in regards to its anatomy. The arms also feature some nice muscle tones in the shoulder, bicep, and forearm, and you can see the claws here are also painted in black tones, and again, I do like the wrinkle work around the shoulders there. Let's talk gravity with this figure. Anytime you're sculpting a figure, the way that you throw the skin really helps sell the movement, and I think that's even more important when you're trying to convey an unorthodox position like this. When you move along the underside, you can see all the great ways the flesh is dangling down as the rex lies on its side. There's a great sag in the gullet there. The right arm is hanging over the chest, and you can see the wrinkles of the gut settling past the standard belly plate scaling of the Jurassic Park. Rexes. Then of course that massive leg is resting against the body with the toes of the feet nestled on the ground. All of this helps sell the appearance that gravity is working on this animal as it lies on its side. Moving along the dorsal region, you can see Rebor have also tweaked the color scheme with this figure, whereas the jungle variant of the Killer Queen had more lime colored bars along the back. Bites the Dust sports some yellow diamond-shaped markings. These yellow markings can also be found on the thighs, arms, and head of the Rex, and have been framed by a sort of forest green striping in each case. Although a case could be made that these yellow markings are a bit too heavily applied, the overall color scheme feels much more accurate to the male Rexes of the universe, with its mix of lighter and darker greens and a cream underbelly. Of course, as is typical with Rebor, there are two color schemes available, with one of them being based on the female Rex design. However, given the male features of the sculpt and the fact that the dead Rex in the film was green, the choice between variants is a no-brainer to me. That being said, with the release of Dominion and the upcoming battle between the Giganotosaurus and T-Rex, that could easily change. Real quick, let's discuss the gore. Rebor always seems to do a good job in this department. The injuries include a massive bite along the back of the neck, I wonder what that's from, a couple of scratches on the face, a series of three-pronged gouges on the flank above the shoulder and behind the thigh, and a single cut on the leg itself. The blood work has been handled to perfection. The color, consistency, and translucency feel right, and there's an unevenness to the application that makes it look like it's been splattered or ran out around the wound, which is great. With all of that in mind, I think Rebor has done a good job of presenting us with a believable fresh carcass. The combination of how the flesh hangs and settles with the injury really sells it, and I do think the sculpt looks both screen accurate and well done. Although Rebor can sometimes over-sculpt their models, they seem to have struck a strong balance with their detail work on this one, which is very refreshing to see. As far as the size of the figure goes, you're looking at around 13 and a half inches long, or about 34.5 centimeters in a straight measurement. If you measure along the curve of the back, however, you're actually looking at something a little closer to 16.5 inches, or 42 centimeters long. It's a little vertically challenged, given that it's a corpse coming in at around two and a quarter inches off the ground, or about six and a half centimeters. I believe the Rex in the film was around 37 feet long, which, if you're imagining this as representation of that animal, would put it around the 127 scale mark. So yeah, the figure is well made, but on its own it does amount to little more than a bougie paperweight. The real draw of it is the idea of being able to lay it alongside some of your other big theropods, and it is pretty versatile in this regard. For one thing, you could pose it with some of the other Rebor Rex models, like the aforementioned Killer Queen. It could be a pair of dueling male Rexes, or if you have the brown version of the Queen, it could be a male that got too close to a female, and she did not appreciate his advances. Alternatively, I think the controversial Rebor King T-Rex works really well with this piece. For one thing, it's close enough to the JP style to work alongside the movie models, and the raised foot allows you to rest it on Bites the Dust for balance just like you would with the dead Triceratops. And if you're sick of JP knockoffs reigning supreme in the market, you could bring in your more accurate Rexes to pose above the fallen Jurassic model as a bit of a statement. Regardless of which Rex figure you want to pose with Bites the Dust, we know T-Rex was a bruiser, so having him felled by another Rex in your collection makes perfect sense.
And like I said, with the coming release of Dominion, a dead Rex will make a great accessory to go along with a Giganotosaurus model. Here it is with the W Dragon Giga, which I just reviewed the other day as part of Killer Shrew Fan Spooktacular toy reviews. But of course, the real reason to get this figure is to have it alongside your JP3 Spinosaurus. Regardless of whether you have the Nanmu offering or the larger W Dragon figure, this does make for an awesome display that allows you to recreate the conclusion of that original fight. Personally, I think the imposing size and aggressive look of the W Dragon looks great alongside the Dead Rex, but the details and paint of the Nanmu offering feel more aesthetically similar to the Rebor style. And that was the Rebor T-Rex Carcass Bites the Dust. Overall, I really do think this makes for a wonderful accessory to the collection. It's well sculpted, screen accurate, the paint looks good, and the gore is very well done. The versatility of the model is also a plus, but I do think it needs something to go along with it to justify its presence in your collection. Whether that's another Rex, a Spinosaurus, or some other large theropod, it's up to you, but as a standalone piece, it might be a bit out of place. Plus, since it's lying down, it does take up a good amount of shelf real estate, and it's a little more expensive for something that's essentially meant to serve as an accessory to another figure. That being said, I do think there's going to be a place for this figure in a lot of collections, especially if you're a fan of JP3. Personally, I do dig this model and love posing it alongside my Spinos, but it does have me hoping Rebor decides to also make a Spinosaurus carcass someday so that I can have a little revenge through my display. I mean, we wouldn't want to think they're biased now, would we? But as always, I want to know what you guys think of this figure. Do you own it yet? Are you planning to pick it up? And are you Team Spino or Team Rex? Drop a comment down below, and as always, thank you so much for tuning in to today's review. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope to see you again in the next one. Take care out there, and bye bye